Hey guys, it's me Smar here, and today I'm going to be reading a Sugawara Koshi Exesner. This one is titled My Romantic Ideal, and this is part two in this series. There is two other parts, there's an Akashi and a Bogota one, so comment down below which one of them you want next, and I'll try my best to do it for you guys as soon as possible, with an exception of me doing other videos, of course. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's get right on into the video. It hurt. You looked at the conversation, knowing what it was leading to. Your conversation partner gave a reply, but you decided not to offer a response. Placing your phone down on your nightstand, you turned in your bed to face the wall. It hurt. The reason you knew very well. Time skip. Last name, Sugawara said. Did something happen? You looked up, only to, be, only to come face to face with hazel brown eyes. He was looking at you deeply, disconcerning your problem. You dropped your gaze. It's nothing. He replied, returning your attention to the book that you were reading. Sikawara didn't seem convinced. He took a seat across from you. Did I do something wrong? Am I the problem? A skip of your heart. Of course not. You replied immediately. Then why won't you tell me? You used to talk to me about everything, although most of the time it would just be you complaining about stuff. You blushed in embarrassment. Not all the time. He smiled when he finally got a reaction from you. I did say, most of the time, now didn't I? You puffed your cheeks. So, Sugawara began, what's wrong? You closed your eyes and held your breath. You heaved a sigh. It's this classmate of mine in blank subject. His eyebrows creased. What about your classmate? Well, our conversation has been turning in a, rec turning in a direction I don't like. Is that such a problem? When the conversation to moves towards the love prospects, I get pretty uncomfortable. Shouldn't that be alright? I mean, I don't think she means to do anything with that information. You're wrong at a lot of things there. First, who knows if that girl is actually like my love rival or something. Second, what if she's collecting information about me for a friend? Third, he paused. My classmate is not a she, but a he. And that changes a lot of things. It took a couple of blinks for the statement to sink in. Was he gonna confess? I've had that same conversation a lot of times before. If I had replied to him once more, or one more time, he would have. Why don't you just- why don't you tell me about that sooner? You shrugged. Slipped my mind. Sigawara raised an eyebrow. It was a contradiction, and you both knew it. After all, if it had slipped your mind, you wouldn't have been troubled by it. You just wished that he changed the topic. He did. What time did your shift end at the convenience store today? He asked. Eight o'clock, you replied. Mm, why do you ask? I was thinking about stopping by later. My mom wants me to buy a couple things, so I was wondering if we could walk home together afterwards. Really? Um, what time does volleyball practice end? Around 7.30. Sure, you replied. Let's walk home together later. After all of your classes had ended that day, you headed to the convenience store where you worked a part-time job. You worked as a cashier with another colleague or with a, another college student who had studied at a different university. He was around your age, kind, smart, and you've known him for about two years now. Unlike the other boys you were with, Sugawara and his high school team or Sugawara and his high school teammates were exceptions. You didn't feel awkward around him. He wasn't around today though because he was hospitalized. Sugawara entered the store at around 7.45 as he brought and he bought the things that his mother had requested. When your shift ended, both of you began to head home. The silence that took place wasn't an uncomfortable one. After walking home alone late at night for as long as- or after walking home late at night for as long as you had started your job, you had felt content having someone to walk beside with. You looked at your companion, and it didn't look like he minded his silence either. Sugawara was your classmate for your second and third year of high school. You didn't seem to expect that the both of you would choose the same university, although you both did choose a different course, you still had classes together. All of a sudden, you feel something wrap itself gently around your neck. You looked at Sugawara, wondering if or what that scarf was for. It's an end of the year month, wait, it's at the end of the year and you're not keeping yourself warm enough. He said, or he answered your unspoken question. Your cheeks heated up a bit. Won't she be cold? I mean, you're letting me borrow your scarf. Next time, don't let me worry about you being cold then. You giggled. Uh, yes, yes, Sugumama. Hey, he reacted. Don't call me that. 
You laugh some more. You adjusted the scarf on your neck, hoping that he wouldn't notice your red cheeks. You wish that the time would slow down so you could spend more of it with him. Time skip. Sugawara was simply on his way to class when he heard a familiar voice speak louder than normal. I asked you not to give my number out to just anyone. You half shouted at your friend. Shouldn't you ask my permission to do something like that first? I'm sorry, but he was persistent, your friend exclaimed. What was I supposed to do? You inhaled deeply to calm your nerves. <sighs> okay, so here's what you do. The next time someone asks for my number, tell them this. Please go have the guts to ask her yourself. Your friend raised an eyebrow. You sure? If you don't want to give your number out to people, then... Or, if you don't give your number out to people, then you would be labeled as rude. You sigh. It doesn't matter anymore. I don't want to deal with things like that again. It just hurts. If you want them to stop, then just say it straight to their face, what you really want, and how you want your romantic life to go. You sighed. Then I don't think- wait, then you- then don't you think it would end up being pointless if I tell them all of that? She took in your statement. Friends before lovers, right? I guess, but I can't- or can't you just give them a chance? Or at least a reason why you don't want to go out with them? I- there was a reason that you didn't- want to admit to because you didn't want to keep your hopes up. I just want someone who understands. He didn't mean it, or he didn't mean, I'm sorry, he didn't mean to be, but Sugawara was eavesdropping on your conversation. He sighed. He knew things were going to be getting a little more difficult from now on. Time skip. Good morning, oh, sorry. Good afternoon. You announced yourself as you entered the convenience store to greet your co-workers. Good afternoon, last name son. The manager said, how was school today? The same as usual, hectic. You answered, you were about to enter the staff room when you saw someone beside the cashier that you worked on. Uh, random boy son, you're back? The mentioned boy looked at you. Hey, last name son, good afternoon. You're out of the hospital already? I thought you wouldn't be back for a few more days. He sheepishly smiled and rubbed the back of his neck shyly. They said that I was recovering fast, and besides, I wanted to see someone again. You laughed. Lucky person, whoever that is. He smiled more comfortably now. You should smile more often, it really suits you, he said. Your heart gave a thump. You shyly looked away. <laughs> Thanks, you said. It wasn't every day that somebody gave you a compliment like that. But however, it didn't really make a big impact, or as big of an impact as you expected. Your heart didn't flutter, unlike how it was when he would say that to you. Sorry for bursting your bubble, lovebirds. But, random boy, uh, random boy Chan, you have a customer, the manager said. The both of you flinched. L the. <laughs> Sorry. Um. L love? The boy blushed. Manager son, we're not. Yet. The manager. A romantic heart. A, rom I don't, a romantic at heart grinned. I can see it coming, though. Um, excuse me, the customer said. You froze at the sound of that voice. I need to buy these things quickly, Sugawara said. Ah, yes, I apologize for the delay, the random boy said, starting to interact, or starting to transact the, the items. You glanced at him, only to see that he was looking your way. You turned around immediately and headed for the staff room. I'm gonna go change into my uniform first, he said. The moment you entered the staff room, you covered your face in embarrassment. Oh, please, oh, please, tell me he didn't hear that. Ugh, manager's son, why did you have to say those things? He took a few breaths, calming down your heart before you returned to the counter. Sugawara was no longer there. He felt relieved, at the same time, disappointed. Last room, son, are you okay? The random boy said. You don't look alright. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm fine, really. He said. Hmm, uh, well, okay then. Um, hey, last name, is there something- Wait, there's something I want to talk to you about when our shift is over, he said. Is that alright with you? Talk to me about what? Just a little something, he shyly smiled. You felt something odd about his actions. It made you remember the other times when guys would confess to you and ask you out. Um, uh, sure, alright. After hours, or hours after your shifts had ended, you changed out of your uniform and were now rummaging through your bag for your phone. When you finally found it, you were checking to see if there was a message from Sugawara. You opened your finger, or your finger lingered over the open button. Holding your breath, you shoved your phone back into your bag. 
you quickly sighed, or you quickly fixed your things and headed out of the convenience store after bidding a goodbye to the manager. The random boy was already there, waiting for you. So, what did you want to talk about, random boy son? You asked. He looked at you. His cheeks were flushed. Maybe because of the cold? Or not. You could feel your heart pick a rhythmic beat of nervousness. When those words came out of his mouth, you thought you were ready to answer him. He had followed your ideal route after all. Friends before lovers. He nervously waited for your reply. I'm happy that you told me, he started. Unlike the others who just randomly confessed, you did something different. And I'm glad you did. You paused before you took it before you took a deep breath, giving him your answer. Time skip. You were walking home after the confession when you had stopped and looked up at the sky. Your breath became or your breath came out as puffs of smoke and tiny spots of white floating down the, from the sky. As tiny spots of white floated down from the sky. It's snowing, you said. And it's beautiful, someone said, not so far away from you. He was leaning on the wall, hands in his pockets, and looking at the sky. Sibuara, he said, seeing him made your heart ache. What are you doing here? He smiled, but he didn't look your way. You didn't answer my text, so I thought I'd wait for you here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't check my phone before leaving the convenience store. You lied. The smile left him, but he still wouldn't look at you. So you walked closer to him instead. You leaned on the wall and looked up at the sky in silence together. He confessed to you, didn't he? Sigawara asked, not looking at you. Your co-worker, I mean. Why do you think he did? Your conversation a while ago. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry you had to hear that. He chuckled nervously. Nervously? I walked in at an unfortunate time. So did he, or... Uh, so he did, didn't he? Yeah, he did. You're not going to complain about it? He used to do that before. No, I'm not. An awkward pause. So, that means you accepted it? Heavy, heavy and strained tension filled the atmosphere. It felt like one word could ruin the friendship you've built with him over the years. It really hurt. No, he breathed out. He straightened up and looked at you with a surprised expression, as if he didn't expect you to reject him. You felt your heart clench. I couldn't accept him because I realized something we... Something when we confessed. What I wanted wasn't what I really wanted. So, what is it you really want? You made a forced, light laugh. If you don't know the old one, then can you really tell the new one? Sigura looked you in the eye. You don't like it when someone you barely know confesses to you out of the blue, because you want the love that comes from being friends first and getting to know each other. You blinked. You knew? I just happened to find out during high school, especially during all of your ramblings. Oh. Silence filled the air again. Sugawara sighed. I don't want to regret this after all, he sighed. You barely heard him. Regret what? Today, I may have made the closest call I ever have. That just proves that maybe someday, someone may really take you away. Take me away? Sugawara. He moved in front of you, keeping you between him and the wall. I don't want to lose you to someone else, he said, but that can happen any time because I choose to keep this secret from you, Wyan. He paused. Your heart was beating hard against your chest. I love you. Won't you consider being my girlfriend? As the snow continued to gently fall around the two of you, you hurriedly used the cuffs of your jacket to wipe away the tears that were falling from your face. Sugawara began to panic when you started crying. He started to worry, not knowing exactly what he was worrying about. Should he try to comfort you, or were you crying because your relationship as friends were now over? Were you going to reject him after all? Eh, Sugawara, he said through the tears. Do you know why I couldn't accept that guy's confession? He hesitated. Why? Because after being your friend for so long and getting to know you after all these years, I realized that... I was in love with you. It's my true romantic ideal, friends before lovers, but what I really wanted was mutual love from that, not just one-sided feelings. Not just one-sided feelings from a guy, and not just one-sided feelings from me. I love you, Sugawara. I have for a long time now. 
Sugawara gently, gently cupped your face, brushing away the tears that stained it. When you looked up, he was smiling, that bright smile of his that let you know that he felt the same way. That was so sweet. That was so sweet. Oh my god. Hey, Suga, that was really adorable. Um, even though, like, that kind of love, that's, like, the best kind, like, the friends to lover or enemies to friends to lovers. I want that in real life, but unfortunately, we just have to, we get that in fanfiction, guys. Me reading those Bakudeku 400k words slow burn. <laughs> that's what I'd be getting out of this, but, like, sad times, guys. If only this would really happen to us, but it won't. But you have fanfiction and me to do that for you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and have the notification bell so you know if I every single time I post a video. And also comment down below some other characters you want me to do, and I'll try my best to do them for you guys. Um, if it's, like, a rare character like Kida or something, because people have been requesting that, um, there's not that many fanfictions for them, so, like, unless I find a good one, those are gonna have to wait. Sorry. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and also like the video because that does something for the YouTube algorithm. And, um, yeah, make sure you guys vote on my community tabs when I make them so you guys can have a little bit of input on what I post for my videos for the next day. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!